Welcome, guys. So I am Tim D'Alessio. I am the CTO over here at TechAllution, and I run our cloud practice. So I got a very special treat for you guys today. I've put together a little panel of some of my experts over at TechAllution, uh, and they will represent some different competing technologies. So with Anthos now in the marketplace, uh, there are some competing technologies to how it works and some of the advantages there. So I thought it'd be good to put a little panel together here so we can have a little discussion. Uh, so let's uh, introduce you guys. So why don't you start with Moiz? Give me a little bit of background and what you do at TechAllusion. Yeah, hi, I'm Moiz Khan. I work at TechAllusion Singapore as a cloud engineer. Uh, my main area of expertise for the last five years has been Pivotal Cloud Foundry, managing and operating and everything. And for the last few months, I've been working on GKE and GCP in general. Great. Uh, and how over to you, Pragisha. Hi, I'm Pragisha Kalagedera. Uh, I'm also working in Singapore uh, Technician Office. And I was working as a DevOps engineer in my last eight months in Technician. And previous, before that, I was uh, working with uh, OpenShift platform and managing the platform and maintaining the OpenShift platform. So my main experience is in uh, Kubernetes uh, products. Cool. And the man with the epic beard. I'm Brian Frost. I'm in uh, Oklahoma City in the U.S., uh, also with TechAllusion, <laughs> strangely enough. And and I've been working with Anthos now for a couple months, done a done a fair fair bit of installs, just, just did another this week. So been been working with it quite a bit lately. All right, great. So let's kick it off with a question. So this shouldn't be too hard. This should be all within your wheelhouse here. So uh, let's see what you got. So, you know, Kubernetes is leading the industry in providing an environment that supports scheduling and running Docker containers. Uh, and can existing Kubernetes tools and applications be easily integrated within the platform that you are representing? So let's start over with Moise on the PC PCF side. Yeah, so PCF in its current state supports Docker, or but in a very limited fashion. You can push Docker images as applications, but they they're still, you know, they must still adhere to the constraints and rules that apply to regular Cloud Foundry applications. But it's in no way Kubernetes compatible or based on Kubernetes. So it's it's not going to work with you know traditional Kubernetes tools like Helm. Pivotal has a separate product for uh, a more Kubernetes focused approach, which is called PKS. And it sort of, it works alongside PCF. Sounds good. So uh, what about on the, um, the OpenShift side? Yeah, the OpenShift is also built on top of Docker and Kubernetes. And uh, the main thing about OpenShift is that uh, you have to use RHEL VM or CentOS as your uh, worker nodes. So that means you cannot uh, use other Linux distros if you are going with OpenShift. And the other thing I see is uh, if you are going to uh, invest on, I mean, uh, investigate on OpenShift, uh, it has strict security policies. So that means uh, you can't simply get a Docker image from Docker Hub and run there. Because uh, OpenShift by default is not allowed to run as true. So there are a bit of uh, uh, initial work that you need to adjust or need to understand before uh, jumping to the OpenShift. Um, and then finally, Mr. Anthos man. <laughs> well, well, the beauty of Anthos is really that it, uh, and particularly we're talking about the GKE on-prem uh, portion of Anthos, and that, that it's a, a curated Kubernetes environment by the people who created Kubernetes. And so uh, it natively supports, you know, the, the wealth of, of industry and the open source communities, uh, available tools and, and applications. So everything's built to, to standardize uh, the cloud native foundations, uh, Kubernetes standards. So it really is, it's as Kubernetes as you can get. So it'll run everything that that is available to, for standard Kubernetes. All right, uh, thanks for the answers. Um, so let's move on to the next question then. So is the management layer of your platform capable of managing both cloud and on-premise data centers? So yeah, from on the PCF side, a PCF instance is very specific to your cloud environment or to your data center if you're going on-prem. There's no management layer that spreads across multiple PCF instances. Each is very isolated and very independent. Uh, but regarding the hybrid approach, uh, PCF, newer versions of PCF do have support for Istio, which is a service mesh uh, to bridge applications that are running across different cloud environments or between on-prem and the cloud. 
just as a follow up too, what about managing in one place? What if you have multiple environments? Is there any place or centralized location that you could actually view all these different foundations? Coming built into Club PCF, there's no such thing like, like that. There's no uh, tool provided by Pivotal for a centralized management of multiple PCF instances, whether it's on-prem or on the cloud or anywhere. Okay, got it. On the OpenShift side, what about the managing the uh, on the cloud and the on-prem? Where, where does, what does that look like? Yeah, OpenShift uh, container part, I mean, it has several flavors. So if you talk about OpenShift container platform, you can run your uh, worker nodes on premises as well as cloud. I mean, you can deploy uh, clusters in anywhere, any cloud provider, OpenShift container platform version. Uh, and I have seen a, a demo that uh, you can crowd traffic using F5, with F5 uh, support some of the OpenShift features. So, for example, you deploy your three clusters in on premises or AWS and GCP. And using F5 router, you can route traffic. Uh, to those three clusters. Management layer, one management layer, I have uh, I have seen, uh, I have heard that there's a uh, cloud management tool to manage different uh, platforms, but I haven't have experience on that, so uh, I haven't seen it by myself, but I have read through that uh, there's a uh, cloud management tool for that, but I haven't seen it. Okay, and then finally on the Anthos side, what does that look like? Would answer directly your, your question, it's a little bit tricky because the Anthos part of things is the, the on-premise uh, portion of GCP and GKE. So what, what you do end up with is you do end up with GCP and its management interface for Kubernetes actually applies to both your on-prem and your cloud GKE instances. You get that, you get that single pane of glass where you, all your clusters, they show up together uh, they're all all in order. You go look at your different entities, and they're they're either mixed together if you want to see them that way, or you see all those entities separately. And and already the portions of Istio that are built into to GKE on prem allow you to move things around and have like a global namespacing. But some of the tools are are still coming out. It looks like they're scheduled for next quarter uh, to allow you to move move entities between workloads, both in the cloud and on. Seem, well, I say fairly seamlessly. Uh, we're we're in those early stages of, of development on, on pieces of this, but but the things available to you already really enable that that hybrid uh, uh, hybrid cloud environment. So you can you can manage between clusters both both ones hosted in the cloud and hosted on site from one place. It's great. See, he told you these guys these questions would be easy. No problem. Uh, so next question, let's talk about costs and, uh, you know, expenses. So, you know, how expensive are these uh, implementations to run? I mean, is this something that I'm going to be breaking the bank on or are, are, are these aff affordable? So let's, let's kick it off with uh, PCF. Pricing on PCF is based on the number of application instances you plan to run. So it doesn't have, you can have, regardless of the infrastructure that you've provisioned for PCF. So if you're running 100 applications, 1,000 applications, that's what the cost is based off. And, but in addition to you know, like paying for the application instances, you also get access to add-on services from Pivotal, like you know, database services like MySQL and messaging services like RabbitMQ and other things that allow you to integrate with external services. And if you're looking for something very specific, Pivotal also has a lot of partner tiles available, but those are licensed separately from the main one. Does that include your lower environments too? Do you have to pay for them or is that included in the yes, cost. any environment, any number of application instances that you run are factored into your cost. Okay, interesting. Uh, and how is the pricing structure on OpenShift? Uh, so like I said, OpenShift have uh, different flavors. So one is Microsoft Azure, OpenShift on Microsoft Azure. So that one will cost ra uh, roughly around 43K per year. I'm talking about uh, around four nodes of uh, four cores and 16 GB of RAM. So the it will cost roughly around 43K per year. And there's another uh, OpenShift product which is dedicated, OpenShift dedicated, uh, where they run one of their Red Hat account on a cloud provider, uh, for example, AWS. So it also has two flavors, there, that is single and uh, high available, high, highly available clusters. So that will cost you around uh, 36K per single available cluster, 
and 81k per year per high available cluster okay and the other other product that you can run on anywhere you like on your on premises or on your cloud provider so that is open shift container platform uh, previously it was socket based subscri subscription uh, uh, i heard that they are moving to core based subscription but i don't know what is the uh, current situation there and pricing also not uh, I, I i don't have the uh, direct pricing of at the moment okay. previously it was around uh, uh, 10k per two socket uh, when i was uh, doing open shift but i think that have been changed now i see so we'll have to keep uh, keep our ears open for that okay what about anthos how does that compare in the pricing model so they do price theirs a little bit differently. They they price theirs based on vCPUs. Since it is a vCenter environment, uh, the, the virtual CPUs that you have defined your nodes are really where the cost comes from. And you, you ask a question, uh, I think, to Moise about if your lower environments are, are priced the same as your, your uh, production environments. And so they... They are priced the same, but the fact that they're based on vCPUs, dev and, and just your general non-prod environments aren't going to be heavy CPU utilizers. So, so it gives you a real break on the lower environments and, and how, uh, what they actually cost you. But it looks like, in, well, the pricing's still really in flux. So, so in some of the early meetings, they were discussed to be around 10K a month for uh, 100 vCPUs that you have defined. Okay. So I, I, I can't really commit to that, but I can commit to having heard that as, gotcha. as being one of the, the pricing models that's being discussed. I mean, I know Anthos is still pretty new, so I'm sure they're trying to flush out a lot of that. Uh, great. So let's move on to another big aspect of, you know, a PaaS environment, and that's really important, especially to your operators. You know, what does the monitoring look like? Are there any monitoring solutions that come out of the box, or are these things that we're going to have to bolt on in the future? So let's start over with PCF. So what does monitoring look like in that environment? So PCF on its own doesn't have any strong monitoring tools built in, uh, but Pivotal does provide uh, tools like HealthWatch and PCF Metrics as add-ons to your PCF deployment as part of your Pivotal license. In addition to that, uh, Cloud Foundry in general can integrate with you know popular monitoring tools like Prometheus, Datadog, Neural, and many more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. And what about OpenShift? Uh, yeah, OpenShift at the beginning, uh, around uh, when, when I'm, I'm talking about version 3.2, so at that moment they have Hoclometries and Cassandra to uh, auto to use auto scaling. So that that's the problem uh, we had at that time. There were no good monitoring solution for OpenShift platform. Uh, I'm talking about version 3.2, but now they have introduced Prometheus and Grafana by default. Uh, it is pre-configured in the new uh, versions. So now they rely on Prometheus and Grafana uh, monitoring stack. But pre Great. in early days, uh, there were not much monitoring uh, related stuff in BIM. Great, sounds good. Finally, Anthos, what, is, what does that look like in the monitoring space? What? First off, that's pretty cool that OpenShift is doing that because uh, that's that's the same, same uh, tool set, which I, really is the, they're the leaders in the market, Prometheus and, and Grafana, they're built in uh, day one. And so, so they're, they're always watching your metrics for you. I'm always really partial to Grafana, how quickly you can get up and running with, with metrics and, and you already have pre-built dashboards that show you the things that are important to Kubernetes. And then Prometheus with Alert Manager, really for day two operations, this is ready for you to, to, uh, to get to production quickly so that you can alert to things as they occur and and really get a have your finger on the pulse of things with Grafana. So I know that's not exactly what you asked, but you asked about the tools and those are great tools and they're built in day one. Oh, great. Good stuff. Last question. Got one more for you guys. You guys are doing great. Um, so let's say that, you know, I'm interested in learning these tools and I want to start with them right away. You know, what's your experience with, you know, how quick people can pick these tools up and start deploying them out? You know, in, in other words, you know, what's the learning curve? Uh, you know, let's we'll start with Moise over there on PCF. You know, if, if a, a new person's new to the system, what does it look like to get started? PCF, you know, being fairly mature at this point, uh, all the tools have been straightened out and they work pretty well. So getting PCF up and running on your platform is quite easy and there's extensive documentation on how to go about that. 
the issue with PCF comes in because they're using a lot of proprietary tools. Yeah. You know, if something does go wrong, it's really difficult to debug. It's difficult to troubleshoot. Yeah, so you need to have knowledge of Bosch, which is the orch orchestration tool used for PCF. And Indeed. yeah, and Bosch is pretty much, you know, not used anywhere else outside of Cloud Foundry. So those are some of the, you know, the bumps that you'd face when setting up PCF in your environment. Okay, great. Thanks for the answer. All right, how about on the OpenShift side? Yeah, so if you're putting up an OpenShift cluster, you have to put some effort. I mean, I'm talking about OpenShift container platform, your in-house cluster. So you have to invest and you have to, uh, in instances, you have to put some effort to bring up your cluster with uh, configuring masters and worker nodes and stuff. And uh, if you're talking about the uh, use, uh, using, for example, Nivers, after provisioning the cluster, you can easily engage with OpenShift because it has a rich uh, web interface, UI interface. So most of the 80% of the task can be done in its uh, rich look web console. So I would say, actually it has a really nice web console. You can navigate your application, you can scale up, scale down very quickly, and you can change image tags for your deployments. It all can be done via web console. So I, I think it is a rich web console. Uh, for I, I missed something about the monitoring stuff. I just want to add because uh, in OpenShift, uh, the logging, when you talk about logging the cluster data, I mean the application logs, you you have to uh, put up EF, EFK stack. It's not by default uh, pre-configured, but manage, uh, management player or the uh, OpenShift managers have to uh, manage the EFK stack in order to do the logging. So that would be a disadvantage if it's not pre-configured. You have to manage your logging and you have to upgrade uh, so those stuff uh, need to be uh, handled if you are going with OpenShift Content Platform. Great. Good answer. Thanks. Uh, and then finally, uh, Anthos, what does that look like for setting up? Well, first off, because Pragisha referred back uh, to a previous question, Stackdriver is uh, on the other side. It's a it's integration from, from GKE on-prem, uh, integrates day one with Stackdriver, and it pumps all of your logs and your metrics on out to your uh, your stack driver environment, which is pretty slick if you haven't used that at GCP. So, uh, uh, so, so your question again was about uh, uh, training, right? Or, training, or how, yeah. How long so, it takes you know, to... What's the learning curve? How long does it take for new okay. people to learn right. how to use it? Okay, yeah. I honestly, this is standard Kubernetes. It's it's a curated environment, so it's set up in a in a more secure manner, uh, the the way that Google thinks it ought to be set up in the first okay. place. But it, it is standard Kubernetes. It, it qualifies as a Kubernetes deployment by the CNF. And so the, the barrier to entry, the, the, the training ramp up is really pretty short. If you know Kubernetes, then you, you'll feel right at home here. In fact, right. uh, the, open, the OpenShift folks will probably jump right in uh, very quickly because it is, it is Kubernetes. Uh, and it's, and it's, but it's also standardized. So you're gonna be able to use the tools that you're already used to. So, so Bosch, or Bosch was mentioned by uh, Moise there, and I really like Bosch. I ran PCF for quite a few years, still involved. And so it's a great tool, but it's, it's difficult to, to run on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this, this really is standard nodes in Kubernetes. They just happen to run in your, your vCenter environment. Great, well, thanks. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go, and uh, I appreciate everybody for hanging in with us. And you guys want more about TechAllusion and to see if we can come in and offer you a uh, consultation for your company to find out what's the right product for you, reach out to us and we'd be happy to come in and do that.